Hey, Coach Rene here, Origins Parkour, and today I'm going to be doing a review on the new Strike Movement DS Hayes Trainer. This is, of course, the uh, new shoe being promoted by Daryl Stingley. That's what the DS is for. Uh, he's a pretty good friend of mine, an incredible parkour athlete, and this is a huge opportunity for him, as well as I believe the parkour community, to actually have their name attached to a parkour shoe from a company that does not actually do parkour. So uh, let me just talk about that a little bit first. So to my knowledge, we have uh, companies like Olo, Farang, and Tempest. I believe Tempest and Olo are the only two out of those to make a shoe that actually has an athlete's name on it. So Tempest had the Jesse LaFlair and Olo had the Yoan Leroux version of their shoe. However, both of those companies are parkour companies. They don't make products for anyone else. Whereas Strike Movement, uh, from what I know about the brand, uh, I know the owner, uh, I uh, live in Vancouver, so I've always kind of been able to have contact with them. And they've been in a business for about as long as I have, uh, so about nine or 10 years. So they started off as more or less a startup. You couldn't really call them a startup anymore, although they, they have continued to kind of evolve and change their image. But they started off as a startup that was going around to a lot of gyms in Vancouver, obviously as a startup would to partner with those brands and try to get their, their name out there. So they started off with a shoe that didn't look like this one. It uh, had a lot, and they still make this one too, where it has uh, foam in between the rubber so you don't have a complete rubber bottom there. And the concept, as far as I could tell behind the shoe was a minimal, uh, construction so kind of getting into the barefoot shoe model craze and they were gearing it more towards CrossFit and movement culture so like Edo Portal type stuff now they approached me in their first year of business or I believe their first year of business when I opened or was opening Origins Parkour and they brought in the shoe for us to try and I took one look at the bottom and I had zero interest in that shoe. Now fast forward a couple years after that and they started making what they call the cross-platform outsole which is a complete rubber bottom shoe that looks more or less like this one here. Now the new model what I'm going to do first is talk about some of the things I've noticed and then I'm going to go onto their website and just run down through the website. Some of the details are things that I may have missed from just my own inspection. So I have two shoes here. We got the, the model that we currently carry at Origins, uh, which is the, what's it called? Chill Pill Transit AF. Some of you may know AF, <laughs> what that stands for, but uh, what they're trying to do with their cheeky little branding there is uh, the advanced formula. And then we have the new Hayes DS trainer. And th this comes in a couple of different colors, but the important thing about this one is uh, the, the DS, the red and black is Daryl's shoe. So the other two models, we have like a gray one, which has no attachment to athletes. And then there's a black and white version, which is attached to a uh, CrossFit athlete. Now, the first thing that I noticed when I unboxed these, and I've, I've had this shoe actually for like five months now, and I believe it was only released like a couple months ago, and you can already see a lot of uh, parkour athletes wearing it, so I, I pay close attention when I'm watching uh, parkour videos on Instagram, I pay close attention to what shoes people are wearing, because I'm always kind of curious at what is... Uh, the most popular shoe to wear right now. And you can actually see a lot of uh, top athletes. You got uh, Tim Champion, Callum Powell, Brody Pawson, just to name a few that are wearing uh, this shoe. And it's it's quite easy to point out because of the colorway and the uh, the low heel drop. So you see that kind of red and black. And you're like, mm, that's, that's the new Haze DS. 
So I got these um, before they released, and I was told by Daryl that only a few people had them at the time. So I don't know if there were any significant adjustments made when they mass produced them, but from what I can tell, from what I've seen, uh, they're about the same. I've already ordered uh, a full set of these to be uh, sold at Origins as well. So if you're looking to try these on and you happen to live in Vancouver, you can check us out at Origins Parkour. But again, the first things I noticed here um, is that this shoe is much more flexible than a previous model. So we have high tops uh, that they've, they've done in this, uh, I don't think they call it the chill pill, but this very, very similar to the chill pill. You can kind of see the, just the general shape of the shoe is similar, but the, the one thing I didn't really like about the past couple years model of the chill pill is that they're quite stiff. So this one's a new out of box and I'm bending it here, but there's actually quite a bit of resistance. Not a lot of ability to twist there. Now they do break in quite well. And one of the pros about uh, any of the strike movement shoes that have the cross platform outsole is that out of box, they have excellent grip. So we got that full rubber bottom there, nice and sticky. You can train in these right away. A lot of other shoes that you might purchase, um, even Vans, for example, or the most popular shoe right now, or one of the most popular shoes being like the Reebok Classics, is they do have uh, a little bit of tread on them that often needs to be worn down, or sometimes even there's like a factory sp protective spray that ends up on shoes and you gotta wear through that, scuff them up a bit before you can really uh, get good grip on walls and rails and things like that. But strike movement, uh, this cross-platform pl cross outsole, geez, I'm gonna have trouble kind of remembering all these sort of like TM names, but anyways, uh, cross-platform outsole uh, has amazing grip straight out of box, you don't need to break them in or anything. One drawback that I, again, I did find is that they were quite stiff. The other thing that uh, many people will note is the lack of a toe guard. And a toe guard is, uh, as far as we can tell, really important because this is often the first part on the shoe to give. Uh, you'll find that this just starts to tear away. And I do not think that that is something unique to parkour because my most recent pair, I've been only uh, doing like rehab, walking, crutching, <laughs> and I've, I've found that uh, even that starts to wear down this part of the shoe just from maybe even wearing in certain weather and stuff like that. So um, it's been kind of surprising, although I guess not surprising because it would cost more money, that it's taken strike movement this long to really try to put um, a toe guard up on their shoe as they did in their, uh, most recent model before the uh, the Haze came out, which was the Vimana and was supposed to be a trail shoe. And that one has a nice high toe guard up here. Whereas the Haze is a little bit more subtle um, so that they still get that same aesthetic. And I think that's probably the reasoning behind here. Um, of course, as I said, I, I do know the owner for Strike and I could have uh, brought him on for an interview for this type of video, but I wanted to give sort of my own uh, opinion on uh, the shoes themselves. So maybe, maybe we'll do that at a later time. Um, I'm probably going to get some things wrong in this. There's probably details I'm gonna miss. So uh, if you would like to uh, have me maybe set up something uh, with the owner, with Daryl, I could also uh, make a video on that. <clears throat> but anyway, we're gonna get um, back into here. So um, the second thing, just what you can see actually just from reading the insole is, it says 2.5 millimeter drop. Oh, it doesn't say it on here. <laughs> I guess this is from reading, but um, uh, from, from what I've read on the website, this is actually a four millimeter drop. It says it on the, on the box as well when you get the shoe. So, not a huge difference, uh, millimeters here. I don't even think I can show that with my fingers. It would be like probably like, eh, like almost microscopic difference there. But uh, this is also advertised as the Cross Platform 2. So the Cross Platform 2, I guess they're going with a um, slightly higher heel drop, although the shoe is still quite flat. Again, we're 
comparing 2.5 millimeters to four millimeters, so not a big difference there. Um, but the other thing, again, uh, if I just kind of give these a twist, I've only actually worn these for a bit. This is big difference. You, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on there, and I actually have to like really strain to push and bend that shoe. So right away, I don't know exactly what they've done. Um, to me, the other part I feel is when I kind of like squish onto the uh, EVA foam between the two shoes. It feels to me, I could be wrong on this, it feels to me like there's a different compound. The thickness of the rubber looks the same, so I don't think that uh, they made any changes there. I'm going to speculate that it is probably a difference in the uh, amount, either amount of EVA foam um, or the actual thickness. So you might end up having a little bit of a drop in the toe. Um, when I put these on, I do notice I get that little bit, of, that nice little bit of roll, uh, which some uh, running shoes that I've that I've tried on in the past, you get that, you get that nice little roll off of uh, off of the toe. So you kind of feel some padding underneath the ball of the foot, and then you kind of roll forward. I don't feel this one just more or less feels like a flat shoe. So I don't know if that much was intentional. I'm gonna guess probably was. Um, so you have less padding around the actual toe and then you can kind of feel the padding underneath the ball of the foot. So all in all, it really, really feels like that the outsole has a bit more of a complex construction. Um, still, you know, you still have kind of that same sort of like minimal feel and look. But I think, um, maybe it's on the box over here, I think one of the strike movement slogans at the time, I think they said simply advanced. Um, so yeah, you're getting, you're getting still a minimal shoe, although they are starting to put like more details into the construction, it seems, particularly when I think back to the model uh, 10 years ago. Now the upper, um, we got this really nice, uh, it's, not, it's not mesh, but it's, it's very breathable and there's also like a bit of a weight difference. I feel like this shoe is a little bit lighter. Uh, the upper, Again, has this, this nice, light, breathable fabric. Uh, the reason I chose this model is because this suede top, I felt like was the only one that uh, was, was truly durable out of the different chill pills that I tried. So I did find that the other ones would just kind of wear down a bit. And that's not really to pick on strike or anything with the durability of their shoes um, or the make of the upper. There's a lot of shoes I've bought in the past that I've paid you know, a good amount of money for that have just kind of more or less fell apart. Uh, so not really a pick on strike so much as, as it is just the, um, uh, this happened to be the most durable one. And so um, I liked them and this is the one that we currently carry at the gym. Uh, now the other thing to notice here as a difference on the upper between both shoes is look at the amount of lace we have here. And one thing that uh, many people have found with some of the older models of Strike is because this part is already so close together and shoes will stretch over time. So you get a new pair of shoes and then as you wear it in, the fabric starts to stretch a bit. And so uh, we would find that you would tie these together as tight as possible and then that's as tight as that shoe would get. Now here we have this nice wide set tongue. Um, also a nice, just a really nice kind of almost like felt I don't know what the material is, but sort of felt like feel, um, just, just a overall way more comfortable shoe from the flexibility to, to the feel of the fabric. And again, having this white, this wide set here allows you to tighten those more over time. Also, um, I don't know if you can see, but the fabric here, it, it has, a, there's a different feel. Um, I don't know what it's made of, but almost like a different sort of like plastic rubber to protect the, the lace area. Uh, whereas this one was designed with like mesh and then you have the grommets there. And I would find that those would end up peeling off over time. We find this same sort of material um, around the heel. And I guess that just gives like a little bit more rigidity to the build. Last thing to note, kind of just on like aesthetic details, which I'm actually kind of disappointed to show now is uh, it used to say hashtag I am Wavezilla on the heel there and you can kind of see that that's peeled off. I have another, the other side here, this just says Daryl Stingley. 
And I don't know if it's because this is the model that I was sent early, uh, but it seems like the addition of the name there, uh, it's, it's not into the material. So we got this, the strike logo here, which is actually probably sublimated into the material there. Whereas this is just like a glued on sort of thing. So um, not a huge deal with the overall aesthetic. It's, it's a subtle detail to begin with anyways. Um, but if you were hoping to buy these shoes and have Daryl's name forever printed in glory on the back, uh, you may be disappointed after a couple of wears because I did find that that is just almost completely gone. Uh, what else here? Oh, because so we talked about the, the toe guard, we talked about the heel drop, talked about the upper. I will say the one sort of drawback for me, and this isn't, again, really a complaint with Strike. This is just kind of like if I was designing a shoe for parkour, is they have this material, um, which is brilliant because it's still pretty light. It doesn't uh, invade with the breathability of the shoe, but it's clearly a tougher um, material that seems quite abrasion resistant. I would love to see something like that around um, the area of the pinky toe. And the reason is, is, is when you come up from a shoulder roll, um, even if your toes are bent back, like, like they ought to be like this, as you come up from your shoulder roll, that area is going to be touching the floor, whether you like it or not. So if you're someone that likes to do a lot of rolls on concrete, uh, you're going to be making contact with that part of the shoe and you could, you know, take a take a look at the shoes you're wearing right now. If you're a practitioner that likes to roll a lot, you'll probably find that there's kind of a scuff and a breakaway. And just kind of feeling this fabric as it is right now, I am skeptical as to whether or not it will hold up to rolls. Again, not a huge knock on the shoe. Most shoes do not have a good protective area there. But again, if I was designing a parkour shoe, that is definitely something that I would try to incorporate. So they feel fantastic, super comfortable. Um, I you know, can't wait to do more in them. And all in all, I'm, I'm really impressed. I think uh, it's you have a higher price point, but it's very clear that the amount of work that went into this shoe is worth that additional price point. But let's take a look at their website now and see what other sort of details they put in uh, as we go in. So <clears throat> I'm just gonna read through here. Uh, so the ultimate matchup between the uh, <clears throat> struggling here, the ultimate matchup, the best features of our top cross trainers unite for a lightweight, agile, and responsive training shoe that will outrun anything in its class. Iconic black red colorway with speckle midsole developed in collaboration with Daryl Stingley, hashtag I am Wavezilla. Daryl merges intense physical preparedness with free running and film production, turning every movement into pure expression. So I forgot to mention, yeah, this, this speckle, I'm, I'm, I'm really into that. Um, just nice little detail in there, it looks pretty cool. Breathable and flexible engineered 3D knit Jacquard. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Jaquard upper construction for out of the box comfort and adaptive fit. Strategic internal thermal for perfect support and lateral containment where you need it. I have no idea what any of that means. Um, I'm assuming the Jaquard or whatever it is material is um, this upper, this breathable upper I was talking about. Some of the thermal aspects, I, again, I have no idea. Um, it does feel very, very nice to wear though. Again, super comfortable shoe. Optimized for versatility on the new anatomical cross-platform 2 TM outsole ready for heavy lifts and high impact workouts while maintaining excellent running performance. So one of the things I forgot to mention that I'm just reminded of here and I'll, I'll kind of cruise over to the Chill Pill Transit AF description now. So a bit shorter here. Uh, and it says down at the bottom here, Lightweight and responsive, the cross-platform outsole has a bias towards training, yet maintains excellent running performance, lift, climb, push, pull, jump, and run. Uh, one of the things, it doesn't seem to say it here, but, I, but one of the things that they tend to advertise a lot with uh, the former one is, is the crispness um, or the stiffness. So again, they wanted to make this shoe more stiff for a parkour shoe. Not great. Um, you, For a parkour shoe, you want to have uh, that bit of give, particularly around the ball of foot, even down towards the heel. Uh, actually, I say 
specifically down towards the heel because if you do happen to miss and there is some give, some cush in your shoe, you're more likely to catch instead of going skiing on a wall. Um, so you want to get that nice sort of like grab feeling and you can kind of see it again as I like squish here. You can kind of see that if you take a close up uh, angle of a shoe hitting a rail, you can see certain shoes will kind of squish and squeeze in. Uh, but something like this that is much stiffer out of box, you're not gonna get any of that. So slip landings, even with the amount of grip here, um, more likely to happen. Also, I just find it and most uh, more experienced practitioners find that they just want a better feel. They want that softer sort of feel. Uh, some of the benefits and why you would want a stiffer shoe, as they mention uh, in pretty much all their advertisements, is a stiffer shoe is going to feel more stable when you're doing lifting, particularly if you're doing Olympic lifts, which I don't know why you would do Olympic lifts in a zero drop shoe. Most people don't have dorsiflexion with that. So it's kind of a weird, I don't know, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me that, um, you know, they would spend so much time trying to make this like ideal CrossFit shoe when I'm imagining a lot of CrossFitters are going to have multiple shoes, particularly if they're doing it competitively. And if you're lifting, and particularly Olympic lifts, you're going to want to have a high heel. Olympic lifting shoes have massive heel drops so that you can bottom out on a squat with your knees pumping way over your toes and be able to catch those low, lifts, I, I, you, you get the idea. Um, the other thing though is if you do have a stiffer shoe, uh, you, uh, I've, I've heard this noted by plenty of strength and conditioning coaches that if they're testing jumps, so like in the NFL combine for example, if you're testing a jump, uh, if you have a stiffer shoe, you'll get more of a res uh, stiffer, stiffer response basically. So if we think about it, you kind of can uh, wrap your head around this. If you're if you're squishing into even a standing takeoff, if you got that squish going, uh, if you're like jumping off of something foamy and squishy, you're not going to jump as high as if you're jumping off of something rigid and stiff. So if you were trying to, I guess, PR on jumps or things like that, yeah, stiffer shoe. But again, for parkour purposes, and I would say even for your average like a movement artist definitely want a softer feeling shoe. Okay, let's go into uh, some other differences here, just what they got on the website. So between what I read there, uh, again, we got the, uh, we got the Jacquard knit is uh, the big difference on the upper. I'm just trying to dig through here and see if there's anything else of note on the websites. Um, so they talk about rope, uh, both, uh, both shoes are rope proof, I actually, Took some pictures of the box for the uh, for the haze. So they mention um, elevated sidewall. I believe that's like this part of the shoe. So they show in the description as the rubber comes up. It comes up a little bit higher actually on the haze. They say that's uh, for rope proof. I have no idea what that means. I'm assuming if you're like wrapping your feet around a rope, as they do in CrossFit, that um, it helps with that. And that's about it as far as I can see. So there's not, not too much else on the website here. Again, I'm sure that if I spoke to someone from Strike, uh, they would probably have a lot more to say about the differences. But for me, just from what I can tell with the you know, good old eye test out of box, it's very clear to me that there was a lot more work put into this shoe, a lot of new features, and it uh, feels different, feels better. All right, so that is it for my uh, Strike Movement uh, shoe review. Again, if you want to try them on, you can come visit us at Origins Parkour, originsparkour.com for, uh, for coaching, as well as our schedule at uh, both our gyms in Vancouver and Port Moody. Origins.pk if you want to follow us on Instagram. Of course, Origins Parkour on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button, like the video. I'm Coach Renee, and that is it for me today. We'll see you next time.